Our next guest served as a, now I've said this several ways and I get yelled at each way, each time I say it, so Jared, you can yell at me too. Submariner, submariner, and diver during his time with the United States Navy, deploying multiple times throughout the world in support of the global war on terrorism. Appointed as President and CEO of Student Veterans of America in 2016, Jared Lyon continues to help forge critical business relationships like the one with our organization to help ensure, America, ensure America's service members and veterans have the tools and support they need to achieve educational success. The SVA's vision is one we wholeheartedly support to ensure all veterans succeed in higher education, achieve their academic goals, and gain meaningful employment. And we remain dedicated to advocating alongside them. Now, please give a warm welcome to an outstanding leader and veterans advocate, our friend, Jared Lyon. Good morning to my fellow members in the VFW. And Fritz, uh, we were just talking. It's, it's good to see the National Commander-in-Chief outside of the White House or an event in DC. And to all of you, thank you for getting me out of Washington, DC for a couple of days. Now, Fritz, uh, I, I hadn't planned to do this, but you mentioned how do you pronounce uh, those masters of the sea, those sailors who are elite and set sail on ships that sink by design. A submariner is a watch. A submariner is that elite sailor. So I'm here representing our just over 1,500 Student Veterans of America chapters in all 50 states, US territories, and three countries overseas. Where there is an SVA chapter operating presently, there are just over 754,000 student veterans pursuing their educational goals. I'm thrilled to be taking part in this year's convention. As a fellow member of the VFW, it is very good to be here in person after a few years apart. Every time I'm with my sisters and brothers in arms, the VFW, no matter where we are in the country, it always feels like home. So welcome home to all of you. Student Veterans of America is an organization that is committed to acting as a catalyst for student veteran success by providing the resources network support and advocacy to, through, and beyond higher education. SVA will celebrate its 15th anniversary in January. And since our founding in 2008, our success and the ability to meet our mission have been compounded by our relationship with the veterans of foreign wars. If this were a state of the union, I would say that the state of the relationship between the VFW and SVA is strong. As a member of the VFW and a partner, I've had the good fortune to attend our national convention now five times. Usually when I present, I talk about what SVA is doing to empower veterans to, through, and beyond higher education. But over this past year, I've often thought frequently about the weight of the shared history of the VFW and SVA, and what that means for veterans more broadly. And that's what I'd like to talk with all of you today about. As I mentioned, SVA will turn 15 years old this January, meaning that we have roughly a high schooler's worth of shared history. And so, in my opinion, it's time to start exalting the fruit of our shared labor. What has happened because of the work that we've done together? Well, to start, I'd like to share a deeply personal result of the relationship of the VFW and SVA. Myself. My home post is post 3308 in Tallahassee, Florida. I first joined the VFW shortly after my SVA chapter at Florida State University finished marching in the Tallahassee Veterans Day Parade in 2010. Our SVA chapter was invited back to post 3308 by then Commander Mark Alvarez. And by the end of the night, nearly all of us who were eligible, myself included, had joined the VFW. As new members of the Post, we got excited about being involved in the great community that the VFW had formed at the local level. So we started to volunteer in our community with the VFW. 
we partnered with the Post to have other student organizations from Florida State University join us uh, to rent out the VFW Post. And I began to learn from my mentors in the VFW that if you see something that frustrates you, then you can advocate to change it. When I saw something that really frustrated me about the GI Bill, it was the team in the DC office, Bob Wallace and Ryan Gallucci, who took time with me to explain how to turn my idea into action. Back at home in Tallahassee, it was then state commander uh, of Florida, Dan Duffy, who invited me on a tour of posts throughout Florida to learn how we could recruit more veterans of my generation to join. Is Dan here? Yeah, he obviously is. Who you got, Dan? And before the end of my first year as a member of the VFW, a fellow member of my SVA chapter and I decided to run and were elected as post officers. Raul Perez is the senior vice commander of post 3308 and me as junior vice commander of post 3308. I can tell you that in no uncertain terms, without my sisters and brothers in arms in the VFW, I would not be here today. And further, I've been an annual member since 2010, but right before I came up to the podium, I swung by the member services booth and I just became a lifetime member of the VFW. As some have told me after 12 years of membership about damn time, but I finally did it. But listen, this, this story isn't just about me. There are several people here at this convention right now thanks to our work together. Those people include Tammy Bartlett, Deputy Director of National Legislative Services for the VFW, Catherine Castle, Associate Director of Community Activism, National Legislative Services for VFW, Jason Huffman, VFW Legislative Committee Chairman, Ken Wiseman, VFW Department of Virginia, and Cameron Zivikowski, Student Veterans of America Program Coordinator and Legislative Director, VFW Department of Michigan. The titles might jump out immediately as familiar, but what might be less obvious to all of us and those people, all of those leaders, they were VFW SVA Legislative Fellows, a unique program forged seven years ago that capitalizes on the strong relationship of the VFW and SVA. The collective work and impact of those names cannot be easily measured or fully communicated, but I'd like to share two anecdotes with you all today. Tammy Bartlett's tenure as a VFW SVA Legislative Fellow is notable in its own right, but what's even more impressive is that the fellowship has led her to contribute to the veteran community. Since joining the VFW, she has testified more than a dozen times. Her work beyond testimony, such as policy development, analyst, and legislative strategy, ensures VA healthcare is improved for millions of veterans. Her work has immediate benefits, but more mo notably, the VFW and the SVA helped foster in her a leader that is ensuring a better equipped and more equitable VA system for years to come. Thanks to Tammy, we're building a better VA for all. Being a little selfish, I'd also like to elevate Cameron Zivikowski's story. Cam was a dedicated SVA chapter leader at Grand Valley State University in Michigan and a VFW SVA legislative fellow two years ago. His idea to create a more transparent patient advocacy tracker was what has become known as the Domino's idea. It has already passed the US House of Representatives and it's on its way to seeing success in the Senate. That alone is worth applauding. Give it up for Cam. But again, Cameron's current and future potential in our community as a whole is what is most salient. In his work with SVA at our headquarters in DC, he is helping to empower campus leaders and perpetuate a cycle of success amongst student veterans. For the VFW, he is representing the voice of Michigan members in key legislative conversations and efforts. Cameron's efforts with both the VFW and SVA are examples of servant leadership that will ultimately have a lasting impact on the veteran community. Beyond the leaders serving within the VFW and SVA, VFW SVA legislative fellows have advanced conversations and legislation on improvements to veteran treatment courts, thanks to Eric Sowers, gaps in the transition assistance program related to mental health, thanks to Catherine Castle and Tom Wick, needs for military sexual assault survivors, thanks to Sasha Giordetes, 
and in-state uh, tuition from Ryan Taylor, as well as benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, thanks to Chad Baer. This list is far from a comprehensive account of what our shared history has led to, but it does illustrate the tangible value of investing our time and resources to secure a better present and future for all veterans. Sharing the success and impact of our work is not meant to imply that our job is done. In fact, quite the opposite. I share this list to encourage and inspire us to continue working together to address the challenges we all face moving forward. The world as we know it has fundamentally changed over the last two years. Shifts in our economy, global health care challenges, racial justice, social equity, civil unrest, and a thousand other things that I'm sure all of us are thinking about as I say this, they're all complex problems. These problems affect all veterans, and they affect all Americans, and oftentimes they affect our global community. But we as veterans together must remain committed to cultivating future leaders like all of those veterans who are part of the VFW and the SVA. And doing this will bring energy and innovation so that we might continue solving such challenges. We collectively can contribute to solve problems that our future will bring. I'm here to physically show SVA's commitment to the promise of our shared work with the VFW. And I look forward to working alongside of you here with the VFW to realize our future and our potential. I would like to take my last minute to ensure that you all receive an invitation and a welcome from me to attend SVA's 15th National Conference. It'll be held this year for over 3,500 attendees at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort in Orlando, Florida, January 5th through the 7th. It's a premier opportunity to engage with student veterans from across the country, and please know that you are all welcome. Lastly, I'd just like to mention that it's never too late to pursue your education. I'm 39 years old, and I'm a full-time PhD student at Syracuse University. Further, I'd like to acknowledge the State of Michigan adjutant and quartermaster, Derek Blumke, who recently just started his master's degree in his 40s. And also like to acknowledge past National Commander-in-Chief Brian Duffy, who's an undergraduate at Embry-Riddle, finishing his bachelor's degree. And even though he's in his 60s, I'd also like to acknowledge a Korean War veteran, 88 years young, who just finished his bachelor's degree at Fordham University in New York City. I'd personally like to thank you all for inviting student veterans to participate in this year's convention and for welcoming me home amongst my sisters and brothers in arms in RVFW. Thank you so very much for having me.